My name is Dr Lucy Green and I work at UCL's Mullard Space Science Laboratory. It's the Department for Space and Climate Physics at the University. I hold a Royal Society Dorothy Hodgkin Research Fellowship here, which means I'm lucky enough to be able to split my time between, research, between doing research activities and doing public engagement activities. And this summer I had a fantastic opportunity for doing public engagement and I got to go on a cruise ship to see the solar eclipse. Um, I was invited to take part because of giving public lectures and they had an education programme as part of the cruise. We had several days at sea to fill before we reached the point in the Pacific Ocean that we wanted to view the eclipse from. So it was quite a lot of time to fill and I had a captive audience, it was fantastic. So we spent a few days getting out there. Um, we sailed from China to South Korea, down to Japan and then to the point in the ocean where the um, longest totality was being experienced and it was absolutely fantastic. We had really clear skies and it was quite a moving experience even though I was on a cruise ship which had 1500 people on board. You can imagine just how noisy that was when totality fell. I mean these these people travel all around the world chasing eclipses. It was it was quite a special experience. You feel the drop in temperature, the colours change, all around the horizon it looks like the sun's rising. Oh it's just spectacular. For me it was my first opportunity to see a total eclipse um, with no cloud. I tried to see the one in 1999 and failed because I was in Cornwall, it was far too cloudy. So this one was just fantastic, really moving experience. And I've been studying the sun now for 10 years and in particular I study the extended atmosphere of the sun, the corona, which you see with the naked eye during a solar eclipse. So it was fantastic to be able to see that part of the sun that I spend my days studying normally through spacecraft. tourist essentially to experience this. We were running um, observations to support the science that goes on during this time as well. I mean we monitor the sun 24 hours a day every day of the year with um, instruments in space and instruments on the ground but still during a time of a total eclipse those few minutes um, we get really good science data. So for example we can monitor the corona and make an artificial solar eclipse with our spacecraft. But because we're using spacecraft, we have a problem with data volumes and we can only take images maybe once every 10 or 15 minutes. During a total solar eclipse, when you've got your telescopes on the ground with your huge computer and your huge hard drive, you're not worried about data volumes and getting your data down from space. So you can take maybe 40 frames a second. And this means you can do science of the sun's atmosphere, which requires a very fast cadence, a very fast series of images. And you can look for tiny oscillations in the sun's atmosphere, which is tied into the science of understanding why the sun's atmosphere is actually so hot. The corona has a temperature of about 2 million degrees, and we really don't understand why that's the case. So observations during a total solar eclipse feed into that area of research. <laughs> 